Hi, I'm James. Let's take a look at how to use the AWS File Uploader plugin from Zero Code. Just before we jump into it, if you need any help building your Apple product, feel free to reach out to our team by visiting our website at zerocode.com. We're the largest maker of plugins for Bubble, as well as the top gold tier Bubble agency. We have almost 10 years of experience and can help you build any web, mobile, or AI product, or even help automate your business. While you're there, make sure you check out zerocode.com slash plugins. This is the full list of all the plugins we make, and there's like over 700 of them. So there's something there to cover pretty much everything your app could possibly need to do. Uh, for example, you know, there's uh, Stripe Marketplace Express. This helps you accept credit card payments on your app. Uh, there's Mapbox Maps, and this gives all sorts of maps functionality. Uh, this one's really good for saving on Bubble's hosting costs. This is AWS File Uploader, so you can store your files on your own S3 bucket. Uh, there's Air Calendar, there's Air Chat and Messaging. There's so many more there, so definitely explore that and check that out. Okay, let's take a look at the plugin itself. So looking at the plugin page here, there are three things that are really important to keep in mind when you're uh, considering the plugin, installing the plugin. Uh, let's, look, let's look at those. The first is the live demo button here. So I'll click on that here. Now this will open up an app that uh, is a pre-made app with the plugin installed, fully set up, so that you can experience what the plugin's like from a user's point of view and see the full capabilities of the plugin before installing um, which is really useful to see, like, what would a user experience? What would this feel like to use uh, if it was in my app? So here we are. So we can see we have um, a couple of options, options, excuse me, along the top here. We have an, an option for uploading with um, a file preview, without a file preview, uploading to a specific folder, and then viewing the actual files that are in the folder that have been uploaded already. So let's have a look. I will upload this lovely photo I have here from Unsplash. Uh, and you can see this, uh, before we upload, gives us the option to preview the file, to crop it, and we can control the parameters of that cropping once we get into the, the app itself. And make sure it's all looking the way we want it to look. So maybe I just want the, the lake here. And then I go save, and we can see it upload. Once it's uploaded, we can see that we have the name of the file, the, the file that I downloaded from Unsplash. Uh, there's a photographer's name there. We can see the size of the file. We can see a link directly to the file to preview that. Uh, if I click that, we should see it. There we go, there's our cropped version. Uh, and we can see all the information that the plugin gives us once a file is uploaded to our specified AWS um, uh, uh, account, our bucket, our S3 bucket. If we do the same thing without the file preview, I will upload, I'll drag the file again onto here. Uh, oh, that didn't work. <laughs> Let me try that again. Okay, I click that. And there we go, we've uploaded. We don't have the preview. Uh, we had a little notification there saying it's uploaded. And again, we can see the size, we can see the file name, we can see what type it is. Uh, being a JPEG, we can get a link directly to the file. Looking good. Uploading to a folder will do exactly the same thing, but it'll put it in a folder that we specify if we have multiple folders in our S3 bucket. And then under show and delete, we can see um, files that have been uploaded to the folder. We can see here uh, is the one that we just uploaded from Unsplash. Uh, we can see some other ones being uploaded to this folder at the moment. And then from there, we can delete these files, delete multiple files, uh, and manage the files within our bucket. All right, let's go back to our plugin page. The second link on here is the demo editor link. So what this does is opens up the same app we just saw, everything looking exactly the same, but within the bubble editor. So we can go in and kind of pull it apart and see how it all, got my mouse there, see how it all works. Um, we can have a look at the workflows that are powering this, this demo app. We can look at all the elements that are on the page, uh, all the parameters we can play with, every bit of customization we can do with this app before actually installing it, uh, with this plugin before installing it into our app. Uh, it's a great way to get, an, get a sense of and a feeling of, will this work for my use case? Does this have the controls that I need and the parameters that I want to, to customize things? Um, so definitely have a look at that before installing as well. Um, between those two, you get a great sense of what the plugin can do. All right, the last and perhaps most important on this page is the documentation link here. So from here, we get everything we need to set this uh, plugin up, uh, all the workflows we get to work with, the parameters we get to work with, every detail we need to have this up and running. So the first thing is setting up your AWS account. So definitely refer to this. This is very comprehensive. It goes through every step, what you need to click, what you need to set up, um, and how to get your credentials uh, from your AWS account to then put into the plugin to have this connected up and working nicely. I will say as well, if you have any questions about this, any problems setting this up, uh, connecting it to your AWS account, reach out to us. We would love to help out. We've got our, our intercom widget on the, on the website. 
Uh, and yeah, we'll be able to help out with anything you need there. But yes, so we have all of our setup instructions in the docs. And then below that, we have all the information about the plugin itself once it's in bubble. We've got the properties and parameters you can change, what they all mean. You've got workflows, you've got states, you've got everything you need to, um, yeah, have the full functionality of this plugin. So those are the three things to check out on this page. Look at the live demo from the user's point of view. Look at the demo editor from the developing point of view and then the documentation to give you all the details about all of that. Let's build something together though. In this video, let's put something basic together. We'll build the core functionality of um, putting a uploader on our page in our app, uploading a file, and then displaying that file within our app. Let's do it. Okay, the first thing we need to do is actually get this plugin into your app. So from your main bubble screen here, on the left-hand side, click on the plugins tab. And then on this screen in the top right, click on add plugins. In the search bar, we are going to search for AWS file uploader. There we go, you see it here. AWS file uploader, any size by zero code. Now you've got two options here for installing this plugin. You can either pay as a one-stop payment, or there's a subscription option to pay monthly. Now the subscription option is the most risk-free way to try this out. As you're charged on a pro rider basis, you're only charged for the days that you have this plugin active and installed in your app. So if you install this plugin, use it for one day, decide it's not quite right for you and then remove it, you'll be charged the $7 divided by 30 days in a month. Um, so really cheap, really risk-free and the best way to try this out. All right, so I've already got this installed. Uh, you'll have a, a button here to install this. I'm just going to close this down here and you'll now see it in your plugins list, AWS file uploader, any size. One last thing you need to do on this screen here with the plugin, if you scroll down, you'll see this area here for your access key, secret key and region. So this is where you put your credentials from AWS. So look at the documentation there. Once you set up your AWS account, this is where you put these credentials. So put them in in the, um, the main, uh, the access, seek, access key, secret key and region fields here and the dev fields here so that it'll work in your development version of your app as well. Once you've got that set up, let's jump over to the app and uh, get building. Okay, let's see what new things we have to play with in the bubble editor now that we have the plugin installed. So on the left-hand side here in our assets panel, you'll see you'll now have a file uploader element, a file uploader beta element, and an S3 objects element. We're gonna be focusing on the file uploader beta element as this is the newer version of the plugin and this is the direction that the plugin is gonna be going in uh, moving forward feature-wise. And this beta version of the uploader has a bunch of improvements across the entire plugin, including that it secures the keys, the credentials, so that they remain hidden on the client side. And it supports uploading large files of up to five terabytes. So that's what I've dragged onto my canvas and that's this blue square here. Now I've just given it a blue background so we can see it easily on our white canvas, but you can style this to look any way you like uh, as you would style any standard bubble uh, element. But there are also some specific, uh, some uploader specific stylings we'll be looking at as well. Um, so yeah, let's see what properties we have to, to play with with this. So with that selected on appearance, we'll have a bunch of things we can control here. Let's have a quick look. Keep in mind with all of these, under every single input and option, there is a show documentation button, which will expand out and give you more information about what you're looking at. Uh, really helpful when you're setting this up. Now this top section is kind of around file management. So, you know, what, file, what folder is this file being uploaded to? If a specific folder in your bucket, is there a prefix on your file name? Um, are you renaming the file and uploading? So you can really control and organize your files as they're being uploaded through this plugin. Below that, we have the settings for the preview of this actual element. So what's the placeholder text? We just have it as the default click to upload files right now. We can fully disable the preview if we want. Um, what does the cancel button look like? What does the remove button look like? And then elements like resizing and scroll bars. Now below that, we start to get into some specifics for this file management and file upload processes. So for example, the very first thing is what is the maximum file size we're allowing for this, uh, for this upload? And then what do we show if the file exceeds that maximum? What error message do we write? Same thing for the maximum number of files and the accepted file types. We can really specify and get granular with this. Below that are two pretty important elements to the uploading and image management uh, side of things. So we can allow image resizing upon upload, uh, and that can be us specifying the width and the height and, and the method uh, of resizing. And below that, we have the cropping settings. So do we want to give the option for a crop stage before the image is uploaded? What is the aspect ratio of the cropping? Um, and then also styling around cropping. What's the save button? What's the cancel button look like? And, and how does that all feel? So you can make this feel completely native and, um, 
and made specifically for your app. All right, those are our main uh, things that we can control. Below that, of course, we've got our standard bubble uh, styling elements, and we have all of our layout controls as well that you'd expect with, uh, with a bubble element. Okay, below that, I have a text field on my canvas. Now I'll put this here because I want to verify that the file I've uploaded is actually there in my S3 bucket. So I want to display the URL of my file in this text field. So what I've done here, I've, I've put a URL uh, and then a dynamic expression here. Uh, file uploader beta's, beta A's file URL. And this is, as we saw, our file uploader beta A. And we want it to be the file URL. You'll see there's a lot more we can specify here if we want to display this to our user. We have an error message. We have the list of all the file names, um, the progress of the upload progress in percentage, um, the, the file size, the height, the width, whether, you know, the, the, whether the file's too big. Um, there's a lot that you can, you can show here. So there's, there's so much you can display to the user to give them information as files are uploading, you get all the information around what's happening in the app as, as the plugin is working. But for now, I really just want to show the file URL. Now, there's one other thing we need to do for this file to upload, and it's uh, a workflow we need to set up. So let's jump over to our workflow tab. And this is it here. When a file uploader's generation URL is happening, then we need two steps to happen. So that's in here in our elements, and then a file uploader generation URL. So that's our, that's our trigger, that's our condition. And then step one, we want to generate a pre-signed URL. And this is where we again specify the bucket that our file is going into. So this is our bucket name. And then we specify the file path, which is the file upload file path. And you'll see we have a bunch of options here pertaining to the file uploader. And we just want the file path here. Once we have that uh, pre-signed URL, we then want to upload the file. And uploading the file will ask for two fields. It'll ask for the pre-signed URL and a pre-signed delete URL so that we can work with and modify uh, this file while it's in the bucket. And uh, as we just created this in the previous step, the pre-signed upload URL is the result of step one's pre-signed URL, upload URL. And the pre-signed delete URL, same thing, but for the pre-signed delete URL. All right. That's all we need to do for this to upload. Okay, so let's hit preview and let's see what this looks like uh, as I upload a file. Okay, cool. We have our blue square uploader. We have an empty uh, text field here. Let's upload something. I will upload, uh, yeah, this autumn scene. Now, as I click upload, we did have that crop stage that we specified in the previous step. So you remember here, we have said that we want to allow image cropping and we want the aspect ratio to be one by one, so a square. So that's why here, when I uploaded the image, it's immediately put me into the crop window and I can move this around and crop this to whatever size that I would like. So I might want to focus on this path and tree area. I'll click save and we should see a progress bar start. There we go, the file is uploading. Uh, we have an option to cancel if we want as well. And we saw that we can customize all of these options in our properties panel uh, a moment ago. Now, once that uploads, there we go. We now have a URL for that image. We know it's as part, it's part of our, uh, it's living in our S3 bucket as this is the name of our bucket that we specified uh, when I set up my AWS account. And uh, we have an option to remove and see some information around here as well. And as we saw, we can customize this as well within the app. Looking good. Okay, let's go a step further and look at how we can bring down multiple files that have previously been uploaded to our bucket. So back in our bubble editor here, you'll see I've added two other objects or elements to our, to our canvas. We have the S3 objects and a repeating group. Let's look at the S3 objects first. Now this object needs to be on your canvas. This element needs to be on your canvas so that your bubble app can communicate with your S3 bucket and find out what's in it and display it and uh, access the files that you've uploaded. So this, this element is kind of like your link. The uploader puts the files there. This element can find the files again and display them in your app. Now, this just needs to be somewhere on your canvas. You can hide it away, make it tiny. It just needs to be there somewhere to enable uh, that functionality. So there are a few things you need to add in here. You'll see here, once I've selected S3 objects, uh, we need to input our access key, secret key, region, and bucket name that we have put in previously in the, in the plugin details. Uh, so you'll get these credentials from your AWS account, your S3 bucket, or your S3 account. Um, and make sure you have them yeah, set up first because this is how this element is going to be able to communicate with your files and your bucket and find um, the files in question. 
All right, so the second part of that, displaying the files, now that we have that element on our canvas and we have our credentials in there, is the repeating group. So I'll just make that visible again. All right, so this repeating group, we want to specify that what's going in this repeating group are the files from the S3 bucket. Now, the way we do that is we set the type of content of the repeating group to be text, because what we're pulling down are uh, URLs, the actual URL of each uh, image in this case. Uh, and the URL is text. So our type of content is text. Now the data source, this is where that S3 objects element comes into play. So we have S3 objects A on our canvas. So we say the data source is S3 objects A's list of file URLs. So this will get all the URLs that are in that uh, S3 bucket. Uh, get the whole list of all those and display them in this repeating group. And you can see there's a few other things we can pull from this. We can get the list of file sizes, the width, the height, the file names. Um, but for now, we're just going to keep the URLs. So that's set the, um, the type of every single cell to have a URL from our S3 bucket. Inside the cells, we now want two things. I want to have the text, uh, and I'm just going to display the URL itself here. So I've said this text field here is the current cell's text, which we specified in the actual repeating group itself. Type text, and the text itself is the S3 objects list of file URLs. So this here should display the actual URL of our file. Below that, I put an image element. And I want this image to be the image from our S3 bucket. So it's a dynamic image. And the source, again, is the current cell's text. As we know that the current cell has a URL from S3. So every cell has that URL. This URL we know is an image. So this image element in Bubble will be able to display the image there if we give it the URL of the image. OK, that should all work nicely. Let's hit preview and see what we have. There we go. We have our uploader. We have our space, we have our URL, which is empty because we haven't uploaded anything in this session. And then below that, we have all the images that are in my, um, in my S3 bucket. I'm on a bit of a nature kick, as you can see. <laughs> so we have the URL and the image and the URL and the image and the URL and the image, just as we specified. Let's upload another one and uh, see it appear here. So I'll click to upload. Let's choose, hmm. yeah, this is quite nice. All right. Again, we have the same crop stage that we specified when we were setting up the properties of this, this uploader. And I'll save and we should see our progress bar. And there we go, it's uploaded. And if we refresh now, we should see, let's scroll down a bit and there we go. There is our image uploaded. We have our URL, we have the image populating. It's a square as we cropped, working nicely. Now, as we talked about at the beginning of this video, make sure you do have a play around with the live demo app here from the plugin page. We've just done the absolute basics of connecting this up and getting this to, to upload files and bring files down. But as we saw, there's so much more that this can do in terms of displaying extra information about the files that, we're, uh, that we've uploaded. Uh, the different types of uploaders, the, the different functions we can do, like resetting uploaders, deleting files from buckets. Um, displaying in lists that may not just be images, but files and showing the link and copying the link and showing the file size. Uh, there's a lot more that this can do. So make sure you do have a play around with the demo app and have a play around with the demo editor to see uh, the, the full capabilities of what this plugin can do. And that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions at all about this plugin, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We would love to help you get set up, uh, especially with a plugin like this that has a component with setting up AWS and connecting it to the plugin. So any troubles at all, reach out to us. We would love to help. All right, happy building.